Hello, Fried fans, and welcome to Season 4 of Fried, the Burnout Podcast. I'm your host, Kate Donovan, and my mission with Fried is to hashtag end burnout culture. On this pod, we end burnout culture by sharing stories of people who have been through it all, sharing expert tips from the best in the burnout field, sharing hashtag straight from Kate episodes with my own expertise and some fun research now that I'm a student again, plus sharing actionable steps to help you end burnout starting today. If you're feeling burnt out right now and you need personalized guidance, you can book a free breakthrough burnout call with me. You'll find the link bit.ly backslash call Kate in the show notes. Also, if you love fried and want to be part of our community, we'd love to have you. Just head over to Facebook and type in fried the burnout podcast discussion and click to join our group. It's a place for continued healing, deeper conversations and connections with people who just get it. And now for this week's episode. Hello, Fried fans! It is officially the first hashtag straight from Kate of the year, and I am starting off strong on a little bit of a vent because there have been quite a few conversations about positive thinking in the Fried Facebook group lately. So I wanted to address how and when positive thinking is dangerous and even toxic. Um, For that, also, I want you to sort of check out. Uh, sit with Wit on Instagram for more on this. She's just releasing a book called Toxic Positivity in a day or two, and you can snag that on Amazon, and I'll put the link in my show notes. But she's a remarkable resource for toxic positivity, so that's a good place to look. But one of the things that I saw in the Facebook group that sort of irked me, got my goat, had me thinking was a comment about how burnt out people are negative and then they complain that they aren't getting better. And don't they just realize that if they improved their mindset, they would get better. And I thought to myself, oh girl, this does not belong in my house. Here is the thing. The burnt out mindset isn't a negative one. The burnt out mindset is an issue of the communication between parts of the brain that aren't functioning as they should. So when the danger alarm part of the brain is hyperactive and the reasonable adult part of the brain is napping, positive thoughts just don't hit the same way. Mindset, what most people don't realize, isn't just about your thoughts, but about how your brain is functioning and how your neural networks are talking to one another. So everything that happens in your brain happens because your nerves in your brain talk to one another in these like crazy acts of circuitry, right? But the circuitry isn't working the right way when you're burnt out. When you are absolutely in burnout phase, your brain is hyper-focused on letting you know when you are unsafe because it knows that you're close to the edge all the time. So it keeps the danger alarm part of your brain on code red all the time. And the other networks, well, they're just not as loud and not as in tune because your brain is focused on your safety and nothing else. So if you're burnt out, I want you to think of this as a a little metaphor. Positive thinking when you're burnt out is like giving someone standing in a burning home a glass of water and saying, drink up, you'll feel better. It just isn't enough to make a difference. It isn't enough to increase feelings of safety. It isn't enough to actually make someone safe. And if you've been around Fried the Burnout podcast long enough or in the group long enough, you know that increasing feelings of safety is paramount in burnout recovery. So please don't be the person that's handing out glasses of water to people standing in burning houses. Now, this doesn't mean that positive thoughts aren't useful. They're just not necessarily useful when someone is in the depths of burnout. Once you're mostly recovered and you're trying to avoid relapse, totally helpful. If you're not yet burnt out and you want to be preventing burnout, totally helpful. Pulling your hair out every day and watching your body and relationships fall apart while feeling that you don't know what the fuck to do to make any of it better, positive thoughts, not super helpful. So 
I want to back this up with some research so you don't think that I'm just sort of talking out of my ass. And there's a massive meta-analysis done. A meta-analysis means that a team of researchers grabbed all of the quality research that they could find on any one subject, read through all of it, put all of the statistics of all of them together, decide on a general consensus on a topic. So there was a a massive meta-analysis research study done on gratitude. And the conclusion was that it's like maybe a tiny bit useful, mostly only short term, and generally shouldn't be praised as much as it is for what it has been shown to accomplish in studies so far. Does that mean that gratitude isn't useful? No. I really do think that the problem with these studies on gratitude is that it's assumed that everyone's brains and bodies are in the same state when these studies are being done. I do believe that gratitude is incredibly powerful when you're mostly balanced and your brain is online, but in the burnt out state, it barely touches you. Now, if researchers aren't recognizing something like this, then they're not weeding out people in the burnt out state and they're getting a sample of people that maybe... 10 or 20% of them is burnt out, gratitude is not going to have the same effect across the board. So of course, when you take, you know, 400 of these studies that have anywhere from 10 to 3,000 people a piece, and you put them all together, if there's a huge percentage of them that are burnt out, well, gratitude isn't going to show how powerful it can be. Because I do believe that it can be incredibly powerful. It's just not really useful when you are burnt out. To be clear, I'm not trying to start a burnt out Betty zombie apocalypse where everyone who is burnt out walks around complaining and making themselves victims all the time because positive thinking doesn't work. I would not have a podcast or a business if it wasn't possible to make changes to the burnt out state. So, but what I am here to say is please stop trying to positive think your way out of burnout. And if you're a friend to the burnt out amongst us, Stop trying to use positivity to cheer up the burnt out people in your life. I understand that your intentions are good, but I promise you it won't work and it might actually cause them harm because when we're fed these positive things, when we're burnt out, first of all, they feel super unrealistic. Second of all, they feel rude. And third of all, they make us feel shame because we can't feel those things and it makes us feel like we're broken. So when we're shown things like that, when we're scrolling on Instagram and we see these ridiculous posts about like, if you stay positive and focus on your passions, you'll never work a day in your life. It makes you feel when you're burnt out like a failure. And that's not helping anybody, right? That's not helping the burnt out people amongst us. That doesn't mean stop sharing positive things. It's useful for a lot of people. But please, if you're burnt out, please know that you are not off for thinking that when you read those things, it just doesn't hit you the right way. But I don't want you to judge yourself for it because it's just not your fault right now. So for this week's advice, we're going to do two different things. First, I want to give people that are friends and partners and employers of the burnt out a few statements to use to be as supportive as possible when someone else is in a burnt out state. And after that, I want to share with the burnt out amongst us what they can do to build up their ability to eventually use gratitude as a tool later in their process. So here, first, supportive statements for your burnt out friends, partners, employees, whatever. Number one. Burnout is a bitch. I know it can be hard for you to know exactly what you need, but if you have any clarity and there's something I can help with, I'm here. Number two, you deserve better than this. Number three, please know and trust that I love you whether or not you're burnt out and whether or not you can accept that right now. Number four, Have you heard of Fried, the burnout podcast? Did you guys like that super sly self-promo right there? I thought so. And now for part two. What the burnt out amongst us can do when gratitude feels like a slap in the face. Number one, there is a reason that I built the resentment journal mini course because it works. Resentment 
is a superpower, and this mini course will help you see how and why. The more you use resentment well, the better your boundaries will be and the more you'll be able to refuel and recharge and get yourself back. Number two, shaking and dancing. Shaking helps to reset your nervous system. There's a reason our animals, and not just our animals, but animals all over the world, shake it out after pretty much any situation that sends them away from their center. For more info on this, you can grab Dr. James Gordon's book, Transforming Trauma. It's one that I recommend very frequently. And if there's a book I recommend frequently, it's because it's worth it. That is a big one. Don't worry, I'll put everything in the show notes. And number three, sometimes the internal work is too much to start with when you're burnt out. And if that's the position that you're in right now, start outside. Start with the external work, which means throw away mugs that you hate and get a new one that you love. Hire somebody to put up pictures that have been leaning against the wall for two years. Do small things to improve your physical space. It matters way more than you know. So, my fried fans, if you have been stuck in this place where you're judging yourself for not being able to be positive enough, and your friends are trying to cheer you up, and you're wondering why it's not working, this is why. These are the reasons. Positivity can be toxic. Positivity can lead to spiritual bypassing, where you're just ignoring all the things that are wrong in your life because you're looking for the silver linings all the time. And positive thinking when you're burnt out in the burnt out brain, it just doesn't hit those neural networks the same way. One of the ways that you'll know that you are recovering from burnout is that you'll see something about positivity or you'll do something with gratitude and it will actually feel good, right? That's going to be a sign that your brain is in a better, more positive space. But when you're burnt out, it's just not that simple. We need to do as many things as we can to get you to feel safe so that your nervous system can start to reset, so that your brain can start to function the way that it needs to again, so that you can absorb the goodness that the world has to offer. But in the meantime, resentment journals, shaking and dancing, and changing your environment will go a long way. All right. If you have not yet joined us in the Facebook group, we are waiting for you in there. We are around 600 people right now, and honestly, I was gone for a couple of weeks over Christmas, so I didn't do any commenting in the group. I let everybody support each other, and the things that happened in there while I was gone were beautiful. This group is supportive, this group is lovely, and I don't want you to be going through this on your own, so come hang out with us again link will be in the show notes, or if you have a brain that still remembers things, you can go into Facebook and type Fried the Burnout Podcast Discussion Group, and it will pop up. All right, I'll see you in there. Be good to yourselves.